Today on China Uncensored, students attacked chaos in Hong Kong. Hi, welcome to China Uncensored. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. I promised you I'd be keeping an eye out on the situation in Hong Kong, and eyes on it I have kept. And the latest word is, Occupy Central is winding down. It's over. The people of Hong Kong have spoken, and they support the Chinese government, not the student protesters. At least, that's what I gather from this state-run CCTV story. Hong Kong residents expressed dissatisfaction with Occupy Central movement. Yes, pictures speak louder than words, and here you can see empty streets and abandoned barricades, the last vestiges of the Occupy Central movement. Now, if you live in mainland China, perhaps you made the mistake of using a VPN to jump over the Great Firewall of China and were polluted by the lies of Western media saying there was some kind of unprecedented act of civil disobedience going on. Well, if that were the case, where are they now? Apparently, getting attacked by pro-Beijing thugs. On Friday, hundreds of them began viciously attacking students in two different protest sites and police weren't able to contain the wave of violence that suddenly descended. The assailants, mostly middle-aged men, tore down shelters, battered students and foreign journalists. Amnesty International documented several cases of women being sexually assaulted. Eyewitnesses reported some in the mob saying, if you support the protests, you deserve to be sexually assaulted. Clearly, this shows that Hong Kong is very divided on the Occupy Central protest. Oh, Except for one little thing, many in the Occupy Central movement and other observers think the mob that attacked the students was planted there on purpose to incite violence. The South China Morning Post reported that a middle-aged Putonghua speaking woman wearing a face mask using a loud hailer was directing the pro-Beijing mob. Putonghua means Mandarin. In Hong Kong, Cantonese is the dominant language. Mandarin is more a mainland thing. Other eyewitnesses say many in the mob also spoke Mandarin. There were reports that the pro Beijing crowd were bussed in and paid for their actions, although nothing's been proven yet. Others who attacked the student protesters appeared to have connections to local gangs known as triads. Police said on Saturday that some of the arrested attackers had triad backgrounds. Pro-democracy lawmakers have now accused the government of paying triad members to attack the pro-democracy protesters. That might sound far-fetched, but this is actually straight out of the CCP playbook. Send in thugs to start some violence, then send in the police to restore order. They did the same thing in Tibet in 1989. Armed police disguised themselves as citizens and attacked businesses and temples, sparking a wave of violent unrest that resulted in a heavy-handed crackdown. And it's very similar to a tactic that they've increasingly relied on in the past few years in Hong Kong, Taiwan, and even the U.S., using what appear to be third-party groups to carry out their dirty work. Now, this all fits into what I've said before about Jiang Zemin loyalists trying to spark violence in Hong Kong to distract Chinese leader Xi Jinping from his ongoing assault on their faction. Who were these mysterious Mandarin-speaking middle-aged men challenging Hong Kong students to fights? But as their numbers swelled, so too did the number of supporters of the students. By the evening, so many student supporters showed up that they were able to force the pro-Beijing mob to leave. And after news of the attacks on protesters spread, thousands joined a rally in front of government offices Friday night, one of the largest demonstrations this week. I guess their plans to break up the protests backfired again. But the attacks on protesters have made students wary again of trusting the police, as many believe that police didn't do enough to stop the pro-Beijing mob from attacking students. In response, student leaders called off a planned meeting with government officials to negotiate over the protests. Hong Kong Chief Executive C.Y. Leung has again warned protesters to leave, saying that by Monday, government offices and schools must open as usual. That's seen as a signal that police may try to clear protesters from the streets on Sunday. Let's just say tensions are high. Jiang Zemin's faction has put Xi Jinping in a tough spot. The National People's Congress already denied Hong Kong universal suffrage. So Xi can't just reverse that decision without consequences. If he did, then mainlanders might ask why they're not getting universal suffrage too. And that would cost Xi the support of the Communist Party. Of course, if violence is used in Hong Kong, which is what Jiang's faction is trying to push things to, she will face international condemnation, anger from the Hong Kong people, and he'd still lose support of the party.
and there are some indications that Xi Jinping may be trying to defuse the situation in Hong Kong. Reports in Chinese media say Xi has appointed Vice Premier Wang Yang to handle things in Hong Kong. Wang was responsible for defusing massive protests in Wukan a few years ago. For now, the best bet for students in Hong Kong is to continue to handle themselves as they have been, calm, collected, and nonviolent. What do you think of the attacks on the students in Hong Kong? What should she do? Leave your comments below. Be sure to share the video and subscribe to China Uncensored. You can also check out the China Uncensored Facebook page for more. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.